Hey, Kevin. Hey, Tina. So, if it's cool with you, I was wondering if maybe I could co-host Attack of the Show with you sometime. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Tina. I'm not sure what happened back there, but I would really love to co-host Attack of the Show with you. Hey, Kev. Hey, Tina. So, about the whole co-hosting Attack of the Show with you and stuff. Ow! Ow! Hey, Kevin. Hey, Tina. Damn, I'm ribbed. I'm so tan. Look at my body. Wash my body. Son of a so Ow. Just wanna go Ow. host the jack of the show. Ow. All right, you can host! Thanks, Kev. See you Wednesday. Civilization Four is poised to conquer the world, and they're starting with our studio. Man, it's a good thing we built those shelters. Plus, a lot of people think it's wrong to drink on the job, but none of them work here, so watch Brendan live and breathe alcohol. Literally. And we dangled them in front of you like a doggy treat the other day. Now NVIDIA's here to demo their new 7800 graphics cards. Who's a good audience? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. All right, it's a tag of the show. Oh, man, once it hits your lips. So good. Pick up on this. To attack of the show. Are you doing a push-up? You let me hang it. it. She's like, she's like, oh, let's, I'll challenge you to some, some push-ups, you know. And I'm like, oh, all right, fine. And then now I just look like I'm trying to creep you out. I'm like, what's up? Welcome to the show. Well, then I said prompt, and I got doing? really excited well, to read. No, that's creepy. Uh, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me Tina on. Tina Wood, appreciate guest it. hosting for today. Well, yeah. we felt bad. We heard you got a little upset that we had Jeff on and Laura, but my excuse was that we were just clearly saving the best for last. Oh, Kev, you're so sweet. So thank you so much. Such a liar, but so sweet. Clearly, clearly. <laughs> and I'm going to get my ass beat when I go into the hallway. But it'll happen. It'll like happen. you did in the video games, right? Ex yeah, exactly. Thanks for that. Very yeah, nice that was of fun. you. Yeah, very nice. Appreciate uh, it. I'm living out every man's fantasy right now, by the way, because not only to the right of me do I have the, the lovely and the talented Tina Wood. But on my left hand side, over on the couch, Sarah Lane. I got Sarah I mean, Lane. Are you going saying on? that because you hit me in the eye with that <laughs> freaking paper airplane yesterday? <laughs> Did I hit you in the eye with it? Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Left a mark. But it's a hassle. That's good. Hi, okay. Tina. Hey, how are you? Great. Good we, to have you. We were actually kind of talking about the couch. It's kind of a stripper couch. Yeah, totally. It's like a strip a club kind of velvet. Well, after the it's show and the lights <laughs> go down, things start happening around here. Yeah. Kevin, you can tell. Tina, it, it, it smells like lavender, and I'm responsible for half of the stain. Yeah, no, I, I don't even want to hear it. That, uh, that's disgusting. But it's what it's. You, give me your hand. You're foul, man. You're foul. Awesome. <laughs> uh, on Monday, when we had Jeff here, uh, he talked about some MP3 players. Yeah. There was one that fit on the ear. And you were saying that, that he brought a jank product. Ew, Jeff. But, but that you're, you're one-upping him. He did not come with the goods. No offense, but he didn't. These, now, look completely cheesy when you see them. They're a pair of Oakley this thumps, is, Yeah, right? this looks straight out of, like, Batman Begins yeah. or something. But the sound is almost perfect, right? Mm, not bad. All right. So it, these are the Oakley thumps. Yeah, the Oakley thumps, uh, 512 megabytes, almost 120 songs, six hours of battery life. All right, not bad. They come in six colors, and aesthetically, not bad, right? Not bad. Well, let's, let's, let's put them on. Let's All see right, how I'm they gonna, look. Actually, i got a song going on. i got go. actually 120 songs on here, so they don't look too really? bad. Yeah, the speakers fit right perfectly, pretty snug into your ears. And unlike the, the JVC headphones that we had, you can oh, actually... Oh, Well, all right. Oh, okay. Now, yeah. you really feel like you're in your own world. Am I screaming? No, no, no. You do your thing. Okay. <laughs> These are really great for people like marathon runners. It's... Sorry, yeah. I love that okay. No, you get it. You sold. So that's great. I'm glad, we're glad yeah. you're enjoying yourself. Check, oh, what, 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 the problem what? is when you go into, let's say yeah. you're outside, you're jogging, you go yeah. inside now, though, you still want to listen to your music, but... It's not a problem, Kev. Oh, wow. Hold it's on. not get a it, problem. Get, it, get, in look at, look, get in close on these. Now, that is styling right there. The problem right. is, now I know why they actually call it thumb. It almost like... Oh, <laughs> yeah. Comes that'll, down pretty, comes down pretty hard. Yeah. Okay, so, so this, this actually seems like a viable product. Not bad. Volume control, uh, track changing, all on the headset. Yeah, you got... It yeah, does it, collapse very nicely. Uh, my concern is with any with anything Oakley. Uh, what's the price? Five hundred bones, man. It's mm, expensive. It really yeah. or three ninety five for two hundred fifty six megabytes, which is not as bad. That's not as bad, but then again, it's two hundred fifty six meg. Yeah, but it works it. for the PC and Mac. And actually, if I was at, if I was at your house going, oh, you know, there's some files on your computer I really want to bring to my own, and all I right. go, gosh, I just I've got my sunglasses. I can actually put the files here. All right, all right. Take if them you came my into house. my house wearing those with the with the lenses flipped <laughs> you up, though, let me in. I wouldn't let you in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, it's all good. All right, I very think nice. they're a great deal. Oakley thumps. There you have it. Uh, let's get to the uh, the web browsing. Oh yeah, because there's some very interesting stuff on the old interwebs today. Okay. What do you um, have? 
We have uneasysilence.com. Now, this is a great blog, by the way. I visit okay. all the time. Um, but what they have today was the how to, it's how to get the OS X Finder style type windows within Windows Explorer. This is, this is normally Mac, right? Yeah, this is an OS X or yeah. OS X, if you're elite, uh, thing. <laughs> exactly. uh, it's specific to it. But now, watch when I, let me just open up like the C prompt. Let me just pull it up. Look at that. Does that wow. look normal at all? Wow. We have that's... the desktop. We can, we can change the, you know, the size of the icons. Just that's make, impressive. Make them giant. Uh, you can actually go and edit. Uh, what is listed here? You know, you can add certain things. You can change the so icons. It's just a for navigate, another navigating tool for people that really. Exactly. If you're, if you're a fan of this, let's say you have a Mac Mini at home, you're like, man, I wish I had that cool little Finder type now bar you have on the PC. It. You do, and it's a simple, quick download. I just okay. want to show it off. There you go. It's not a damn good download by any stretch. It's kind of a mediocre at best type download, but, but it works. I was actually very impressed. It works. Oh, good, good. Thank you. I tr Whoa. Hey, <laughs> hey. I caught that. I All caught right, that. What else do we have? All right, this will impress you. I don't know if you remember the Sega Genesis. Yes, absolutely. I was, uh, boy, it was just a few years ago just for a few, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were in, uh, well, you were in grade school? school? Three oh, high school? Three years ago. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, all the, the fog. The great thing about the, the Sega Genesis was that all the, all the people that produced video games for it, they could have fun with the Sega logo when it started up. You know, yeah. it would pop up, big blue letters. You'd hear, Sega. Yeah, all, little, all the animation things. Yeah. So now here? we have a repository for them all. With AskGaming.com, they have a collection of all the Sega startup logos, pretty much for mm -hmm. all the games. They have like four different galleries. They even have the 32X. This do we one have a Super I love. Ball one? Uh, no, 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 we don't. Yeah, they don't. No, no, no. But, but the, what we do have is, is uh, Pele's World Tournament Soccer. Hey, oh! oh! Where'd the Sega go? Little header oh, the Sega head. logo. Hey, whoa! It happens. <laughs> I wanted to actually see that one more time. I'm hey. sorry. It's worth waiting for. And we got to do this with Attack of the Show. So it's like you kind of come in, you're like, hey, whoa! Oh! <laughs> a user create. That's actually good. Let's do a user created Sega right. thing. Not this Thank week, you. but maybe next week. Um, Residuals. We have the uh, the gol no. They, Not so much. Are you even gonna pay to this? We have Garfield tapping on the on the Sega logo there, and that cute. That's, that's cute. very cute for Garfield. This bit. one I don't know what's. I don't know what that is that exactly looks there. Like a, looks like a looks well, like Gene first Simmons it zipper. It kind of looked like a rear end, and then it kind of looked like a jacket. So. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. But there you have it. A nice collection of all the the Sega logos for those who have never experienced them. Well, wonderful. Not bad, yeah, right? Not bad at all. Finally, I, I get angry at Sarah often. And Sarah can <laughs> yeah. attest to this. And mm -hmm. I, the, the problem that I think you and I are we both... like to call it a love hate relationship. <laughs> exactly. More yeah. the hate. on the hate. Clearly, emphasis 90 on the hate. 90% hate, 10% love. Sure, sure. Even love is very frigid. Where are you going with this, Kev? Where I'm going with this, Sarah, is that the problem that you and I seem to be running into, uh, Miss Lane, is that we're just plumb running out of things to say to each other. Mm -hmm. Insults to hurl. Am I right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can only call somebody. So many times. Right. I just did, I did, I just, yeah. Man, I've been yelled at too many times this week, so I'm taking it easy. So what we have. Well, you know, this is very offensive. The, with it, anytime mm -hmm. someone goes, you're a, you're a, yeah, you're very a total. Offensive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the biblical curse generator. I love this. Click a button. It will generate it. a biblical curse. So uh, I can say, hearken now, plaything of Beelzebub, for you will crash the king's best love chariot, Sarah Lane. <laughs> yes, yes. Ah. Let's take the next Hold one. On, yeah, go, go ahead. So, so say in the dressing room you came in, you go, oh, you've gained weight. I would say, I pray thou shalt have more mother-in-laws than King Solomon, O ye, whose name is but dung. Wow. That was... <laughs> that hurt, didn't it? I'm smitten. <laughs> I am smitten, O you smiter of... Uh, of, of smittenness. Smitten, smittenness. Yes, exactly. It's and a dung. biblical curse generator. <laughs> It's fun. Try it out. I love this. Make your co-host cry. It's brilliant. Yeah. And real quickly, we want to tell everybody to check out The Onion today. I know you're a writer. You yes. love what The Onion offers. Yes. So they've updated their site today with a futuristic feel. 2056, uh, I think. Exactly. Or... All stories yeah. from the future, which is brilliant. And then finally, Next Generation Magazine was one of my favorite hardcore gaming magazines. Their website is back, next-gen.biz. A little more business aspect. Much Not more business. Not as much gaming enthusiast, but yeah, you know. Yeah, but it's still well, great stuff. info, really Absolutely. good interviews. They've relaunched, so we want to support them. So please visit these sites now. With that said, yes. some people like commercial breaks, Tina. Believe it or not. Yes. We actually call those people our marketing team. <laughs> yes. But when we come back, we'll be staring intently at graphics cards. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to party that hard on a school yeah. night. You heard us right. The ladies love the polys. Boy, that was one hot look at graphics card, man. Was, wasn't it? Woo. NVIDIA launched their new 7800 series video card yesterday in San Francisco, but since our budget can only fund a donkey ride as far as Santa Barbara, we actually asked NVIDIA to come here, and shockingly, they did. Product manager Jason Paul is here, and he brought with him the 7800. Jason, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having Thank me, Thank you Kevin. for bringing these cards in, by the way. Uh, I know certainly, I, got, I get, always get in trouble for, for uh, ganking product, but I promise I won't steal these. This is the NVIDIA 7800. Uh, are there extra letters and numbers to further confuse uh, me? GeForce, this is the GeForce 7800 GTX. GTX, all right. Uh, and this is, this is a big deal to NVIDIA. This is your flagship this now, is, right? This is an enormous, enormous product launch for us. It's our flagship, top of the line, best performance you can get out in the market. Mm. 
um, set the stage for us for the next year. So very important launch. Very cool. Now, now it's PCI Express only at, PCI for, the, for the moment. For the moment. And uh, and the big thing about that is the SLI mode, right? Right. And now, what happened with SLI? Because I know when it, it used to be out with 3DFX cards back in the day, GL Quake, awesome. Uh, it kind of went away. Right. What 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 happened now to allow this technology to become you know important again? PCI Express was really the sort of instigator for bringing SLI back because it basically allowed you to put multiple PCI Express slots down on a motherboard. All right. Allowing you to have multiple graphics cards. Very good. And so, so now it's, it's worth the performance trade-off again, right? Definitely. You, you know, as, you, as you've seen and we'll see in, in a little bit later in the show, scales up to 2x. Yeah, Gr great performance. All right. So we'll get to that. Let's talk about the feature set here. It's a, a DX9 card. Uh, so that means support for? Uh, support for the latest DirectX 9 standard, which is Shader Model 3.0. Yes. Very important feature. Really makes it much more easy and efficient to implement really cool next generation effects. And now, you know, th there are other cards out there that support this shader model, but the, the whole thing here is that this is designed for it. I mean, this is a performance. This, you won't take a severe hit when a game starts really using it, right? R right. Th you're actually going to run faster because of shader model 3.0. Really? Yeah, it makes it much more efficient to implement these really complex effects. So you're going to run faster with shader model 3.0 than without it. Very nice. So we're looking at a Luna demo here. And uh, where, where are we seeing shader model 3? What other features are we seeing in here as well? So let's. So if you look in the background, um, you see the eyes in the background. Mm -hmm. That surface is actually completely flat. Using wow. shader model 3 to create the three-dimensional aspect to it. So even though this eyeball looks completely round and it looks like there's depth in the cracks, this is all one big flat texture. Correct. Very nice. And, and something else we're seeing here, the, the lighting here looks gorgeous. We're seeing, uh, you know, like a little bit of a, a bloom effect. We're seeing things get blown out. Is this an example of uh, HDRI here? This is, this is exactly high dynamic range lighting. Um, this is really going to be the killer feature for the next generation of games. And, uh, and, and why, why is that? Is it just because it allows for, is it, is it for more accuracy with lighting? Or, or what is it about HDRI that, that it just makes the It just makes the lighting much more realistic. The human eye can see an extraordinary range of lighting, mm -hmm. but historically within computer, you're, the range of lighting that you can represent is, is much more limited. So this is really about bringing the full range of lighting that the human eye can, can, can comprehend into the PC, and the G470-800 really, really allows for that. Very nice. Now, we had Valve on. They were showing off the, the Lost Coast demo, the Great upcoming demo. Uh, yep. you know, add on for Half Life 2. Will this card support that type? Is that the same HDRI? Is that the same tech? They are, that will they are using the, the, the HDR functionality that's built right into the uh, G470-800. Very nice. Now, now, this Luna demo was something that I saw at the Sony press conference at E3. Correct. So, so it, it is running on a PC right now in real time. So, I've got to wonder how close is the 7800 to the kind of technology we're going to see in a PlayStation 3? So, uh, G470-800 is built on the same parent architecture as the RSX chip. RSX, RSX is the chip that we are using for, um, for PlayStation 3. All right. Um, it's still in development, so you may see it be a little bit more fine-tuned sure. for the PlayStation platform, as well as maybe some extra features as well. But same general feature set in terms of shader Same general technology and concept and, and build design for the PC card. Exactly. Very nice. All right, so people have seen the tech demo. They're like, great, you know, we've, we've seen this before perhaps. They want to know how these cards are going to work for them now. So I'm going to fire up a game. And actually, we have this game running in the background at the same time as the Luna demo. It's the Battlefield 2. Right. Uh, and, and now, out of the box, Battlefield 2 just came out. It's really pushing people's graphics cards. We want to show off exactly how the SLI just kind of churns through this game with no problem. So, so maybe you can explain what we're seeing on the screen as far as these green bars are going on as I'm looking around and okay. we're seeing them, seeing so them move. The green bars are uh, actually the SLI uh, performance indicator. It shows how well the game is scaling with the two cards. Mm -hmm. So you see the green bar up at the top of the screen? You're scaling up to 2x here. Wow. Your performance of a single card with SLI. I have to apologize in advance. I've never fly in this game, and you'll probably find out very soon why. But I just I wanted to kind of attempt to show uh, the draw distance is insane. Now, do you know how we're running this right now? Or do we have full anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering? Full et quality settings, full resolution, um, and you see uh, 7800 uh, in the SLI configuration just just rips through it. This is brilliant. Now, now, how much is a setup like this going to cost? I'll just abandon the plane and hope the shoot works here. So I can show them. I mean, this thing isn't chugging at all. I mean, what, what kind of price point are, are people expected to pay for the 7800 at this point? So the great thing about the 7800 is it's available now. You can go out on Newegg or other top retailers and buy it for a price point of around $599. Oh, very nice. When will we see it in, in brick and mortars? Anytime soon? Uh, probably within the next month you'll see it show up, start showing up in retail. Very nice. Jason, thank you so much for coming on. And Thanks congrats for on the cards. I know NVIDIA's got to be very okay. excited about very it. Very excited. So. Very thank cool. You. Thanks, for, thanks for coming on. All right. We need to do a quick systems check, which I think means me taking this home with me. But providing that franchises, or proving rather, that franchises can survive past the uh, first three installments, the makers of Civ 4 are here, and Brendan sucks hard on a machine in, in order to get drunk. That's the second half of that. Is anyone even supervising me?
Hey gamers, you might know me as Adam Sessler from x -Play. You might also know me as the scary man in your closet. But right now, I'm your best friend, because I'm here to tell you about the Watch to Win sweepstakes presented by EB Games and G4. It's really easy to enter. Now you don't have to sleep with me. I mean, you can. You, you should. Anyway, all you have to do is now pay attention and follow me closely here. Go to your local EB game store. When you buy a game, they'll give you a sticker that looks like this. Peel back the top layer to see your code number. Then watch G4 until you see a pop-up that says enter your EB games code now. And that's your cue to go online at G4TV.com and enter your code number. And if the numbers match, you and a friend can win a trip to Hollywood and tickets to g the video game awards show. But that's not all. You'll also get a $1,000 gift certificate from EB Gay. And just because we like you, we'll even give you an award for biggest thumb blister or best avatar or something amazingly lame like that. So don't worry if you're not the grand prize winner, because EB is also giving away $100 gift certificates daily and $500 gift certificates weekly. But you can't win if you don't enter. So buy a game from EB and make it happen. It's the Watch to Win sweepstakes presented by EB Games and G4. Will you be there when video games take over Hollywood? For more details about the G4 yeah, Watch to Win sweepstakes, go to g4tv.com slash win and you'll get the info that you need. All right, now we get lots of gadgets and stuff sent to us around here, but we barely had the A wall out of the packaging before Brendan snapped it up and headed for the bar. And no, it's not because it's shaped like Tara Reid. No, it's because it allows you to get drunk without actually drinking. Here's Brendan with more. Now, the nice thing about the AWOL machine is you don't get those accusative stares that you would when you just want a little paste. Alcoholics. Hey, I don't have a problem. It's everybody else's problem. AWOL lets you enjoy the alcohol without actually drinking. Here's how it works. Oh, God. You plug it in, find the end of the air hose, and then plug that into the air outlet on the machine. Pour your favorite liquor on top of the vaporizer, turn it on, and inhale. See, when you turn it on, the alcohol vapor just immediately starts coming up the filter. Cheers. It's almost like taking a shot, but it's not overpowering. I mean, I can taste the whiskey here. When you're sucking on it, though, it's really tough to keep it in your mouth. You know what? Please don't use that one. Don't take my word for it. Let's ask a guy with a real drinking problem. Drunk Vader. Give it a try. AWOL should be used no more than two 20-minute sessions within a 24-hour period. Woo! I made it on AWOL! Also, the AWOL machine is small, which really helps when discretion is in order. You see, the alcohol enters the bloodstream through the lungs rather than the stomach making AWOL low-calorie and low-carbohydrate. Plus, it's a it's good, good way to find out who really is the bigger drunk. I like you. I like you. You ever like to roll around in mayonnaise when you're all alone? We should just, we should do it. We should just go and make movies. I'll tell you, once I saw Kevin Ferrer beat a man to death, over a pair of shoes. Is it me or do you find Kevin Ferrer attractive? You son of a. Okay, buddy. Lose a tooth? Huh? Wow. Oh, boy. I got to tell you, if you walk into a bar and there's four guys sucking on one of those things, you're thinking you're in a different kind of bar. Yeah, you know I'm, I'm thinking saying? they just may very well find <laughs> me attractive. <laughs> you just, know? I don't think there was a lot of truth there at the end of that package. Uh, $300 <laughs> for the AWOL. Not bad. Not bad at all. It'll do the trick. I mean, no, for a lifetime of no hangovers, 300 bucks. here you go. I got to gotta talk to Brennan when he gets back, because I want to see if, it, if he actually did have a hangover or not. But yeah. if well, it works I, as advertised, I'm, I'm all for it. Hey, I'm down for sure. After right. the show, little AWOL? Yeah, of course. Of course, we'll make it happen. All right, Motley Crue once said, don't go away mad. Just go away.
We, however, we want you to come right back because the feed demands your complete and utter surrender. And we get a first-hand look at Civilization IV, and you know how excited we get about Roman numerals, Kevin. Mm, fill these. Welcome back. I'm still Kevin Pereira, as far as you know. Still on the way, Jason Kotke documents his life on a blog and somehow makes a living from it. And we asked you to imagine what the Nintendo Revolution controller would look like. You responded, and we recoiled in horror. In other words, it's a typical user created. And this week's Boost Mobile music guest is rapper Pitbull. He'll be here this Friday. But for right now, it's all Tina. Oh, now, whether you prefer to divide and conquer, or conquer, then divide, or divide, and then put off conquering until your wife nags you, you probably get pretty psyched about new installments of Sid Meier's Civilization games. Well, number four is officially on the way, and Jesse Smith is here to show it off. How are you doing, Jesse? Thank you. It's Thanks good to be for here. coming. We're excited to see you. Now, everyone's talking 3D. Yes. Why don't you show us some of this visual eye candy, and well, why go 3D? Well, the, the big reason we went to 3D is it just makes the world much more vibrant and living. It's, uh, you know, you can rotate the camera, you can zoom. Um, it just provides, you know, just a much more interesting world. So you can zoom in here to the cities. You can see, you know, if a, an improvement's being worked, you can see wonders. You can tell which cities um, have missionaries uh, or uh, monasteries, different things like that. We had actually added um, religions to the game, so we're pretty excited about those. Yeah, talk a little bit about that. A lot of it's based on theology. In fact, you can unlock religions, is that right? Yeah, so as you go through the tech tree, you unlock religions, and then you get the holy city, and then you can actually spread the religion around um, to the various, like, other civs, so they kind of have to deal with your... Uh, your religion, so we, we think that's pretty cool. So you're not forcing religion down someone's throat, so to speak. Well, you're kind of. Catholic forcing. is the way we're telling you. All right, and, and what about the great people? Um, great people are pretty exciting. Like people like Plato, Aristotle. Um, these guys will actually appear throughout the game, and they have different special abilities that you can do. Um, you like do? they can create academies, or they can uh, like get, do a great work, so like boost the city culture by High a thousand. High expectations, right? There's no <laughs> Tina and Kevin in there anywhere <laughs> under the great people. Yeah, no, but we might sneak them in. <laughs> All right, and let's talk about uh, combat. Combat is pretty cool now. We've got promotions, so as your units actually fight. Actually, I'm not very familiar with promotions here at G4, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, you can actually promote them to do various things, make them better versus certain types of units. A lot of it, you know, we've just been trying to simplify the combat system to make it easier for people to pick up and play. Um, in previous games, a lot of times you needed like a calculus or a, like a theoretical mathematics degree to understand. Yeah, not so it, good so. at the good, uh, the good mathematics stuff. Now you can actually pick from two leaders. Who are these leaders, and do they vary through civilization? Well, there's 18 civilizations, and there's 26 leaders that you can choose from. So, for instance, if you're actually playing against uh, France, you might be talking to Louis the 14th, or you might have to deal with Napoleon. Woo! And it's one good-looking character right there, boy. Yeah, <laughs> <hair>, right. <laughs> And let's talk about the multiplayer. Have you made any adjustments since we've uh, since Civ 3? Well, we've made a lot of adjustments. Uh, one of the biggest ones is actually making it so that the game is shorter. Um, you, there's game modes now, so you can do quick or you can do epic games. And it also, team games have really shined. So, you know, having somebody to kind of back you up, share wonder effects, right. give you free units, stuff like that, you know, it really helps. Well, you talk about the game being shorter, but it's also uh, a little bit more fast-paced. Yes. So let's talk about that. Well, we... We wanted you to control, be controlling less units, but to make them better. We wanted, um, you know, players to be able to sit down and play a game in like, you know, four to six hours, um, you know, for the epic, the full game. Um, but we also want players who really enjoy that long game right. to be able to experience that as well. So. And uh, you guys have done away with the government types, right? Um, yeah, actually. Talk to me about the decision for this. Well, the reason is we didn't really like the uh, republic or democracy. We thought we could break it up a little bit democracy more. Democracy is such a bad thing. <laughs> well, you know, it, we just want to give people more. More choices. The Civ is all about interesting decisions, and we really feel that the Civic system brings that to the game. So okay, and uh, and you guys have really been mod friendly. Oh yeah, well this is actually the um, most moddable Civ game ever, and uh, we'll have like a Python scripting language in it. We'll have uh, XML so people can change all the data. We'll also have the biggest piece is an AI game SDK, so you know all these guys out there can write new AI or they can change the combat system. A very excited uh, mod yes. community, I'm sure. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> the game looks much. fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. We're excited. Now, Civilization, Civilization 4 is slated to be released in November. You're going to definitely want to check it out. And now, like the only guy in the chat room with an animated Walter Cronkite avatar, 
It's the feed. All right, before we get started, the Congressional Information website, Thomas, is reporting that the subcommittee we talked about yesterday got their motion approved for consideration without amendments. In other words, no broadcast flag. Yay! We're sure the EFF office is in full party mode right now. We'll see you guys at happy hour. Now, a few weeks ago, we had a story about a potential voice actor strike that was averted by a last-minute agreement. Well, you guys might not want to put away those placards just yet because the deal has been rejected by the Screen Actors Guild, putting them in opposition to their sister union, the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, which approved the new contract. Now the situation's back on the fence, and to think all this over a few cut scenes, we're just going to skip right through anyway. Industry analysts are saying that the actors' unions don't have any leverage because, you know, they don't have the clout to make a strike threatening. Because, of course, a guy who sounds like Sean Connery is just no different than Sean Connery himself when it comes to gamers in the gaming industry. Sorry, guys. Now, Sony's head seems to be writing checks its body just can't really cash these days. First, there's all the talk of the slightly defective processors, and now word that they're actually manufacturing fewer PSPs than originally reported. Sony, we're only going to let you lie to us like eight or nine hundred more times before we start ignoring you. But for now, Sony originally claimed to be shipping 18 million PSPs, but the actual figure has dropped 33% to 12 million. Now, this might not seem like much, but consider that Nintendo is planning on manufacturing 20 million DS handhelds this fiscal year. Oh, yeah, that's right, Sony. It's on. Got something to say? Stay up to my stylist, punk. <laughs> Face don't want to hear it. That's right. As you might have heard, the U.S. and Russia were working together on a solar sail vehicle. Essentially, a rocket powered with a sail that's propelled by pressure from sunlight. Experts believe this could make interstellar flight possible, and blah, 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 it crashed. Yeah. Spokesman for the project reported that the Cosmos 1's booster rocket failed just two minutes after it launched Tuesday. And they think, they think it crashed to Earth. Or maybe it didn't, because actually they have no idea what happened to it. So keep, keep an eye out for this and give them a call if you see it laying around somewhere. Miss that rocket. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And finally, a man living in northern England had his entire collection of Star Wars toys and memorabilia destroyed by a bolt of lightning. And what has to be the most biblical wedgie ever administered? The bolt from the sky sent the man's house ablaze, reducing his collection, believed to be worth about 20,000 pounds, to little Jar Jar-shaped ashes. Luckily, nobody was in the house at the time, and no rescue was needed. Whew. But insult to injury, the man's name was Graham Duck. So, to recap, Mr. Duck's Star Wars collection destroyed by lightning. Is BBC News being written by Monty Python? And that was something completely different. Oh, <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. Poor guy. Oh, you feel for suck. the guy. You do. Absolutely. You do. I feel for Sony right now, actually. Yeah. Oh, a little yeah. Bit the the whole... Nintendogs, boy, that's coming in in Japan and just... And they're selling like hotcakes, hot man. Hotcakes, I mean, literally. Now, my thing was, I viewed the PSP kind of like... The, the Microsoft Xbox, if you will, of the handheld world. Like, yeah. Sony couldn't have possibly expected to demolish Nintendo's handheld presence. But uh, did you think they expected to go as, to maybe have a lackluster sales as they do now? Yeah, absolutely. Like, but I think, as video games have shown, it always proves to come down to software. In Japan, they've got Nintendo. The that's Nintendogs. why people are buying it. That's the bottom line. When PSP comes out with that one title, you can't really get anywhere else. It's a little bit, right. you know, innovative. For me, it was luminous, but apparently Not I'm, so much for the rest I'm of the a little world, special. Kev. Yeah, exactly. But well, we know this. Yes, we do. Your we bus do. will pick you up in five. Okay. Oh, sweet. Ice cream. <laughs> oh. Do you want a digital camera but only have $199 left on your gift card? Well, we have some options for you, Tina. We do. And whoever said surfing the net was a waste of time obviously isn't watching this show right now. They've also never met professional blogger Jason Kotke. He joins us next. Our next guest quit his day job uh, to focus on blogging full time, and shockingly, he is not here to tell us a tragic cautionary tale. No, instead, Jason Kotke is here to tell us exactly how he made it all work. Jason, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Now, you've, you've been doing the blogging thing since uh, before it was blogging, since it was just writing on the Internet, right? Yeah, since about uh, March 98, uh, so seven, more than seven years. So yeah, when I was like nine. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I remember your, your, now, your, has your blog evolved over time? Is it the same subject matter? Is it... Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it has evolved. I, it just, it's whatever interests me. So, right. it, you know, that has changed as, you know, I've gotten older and stuff. Sure, so. sure. Uh, now, I got to ask, you, 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 were, you must have been working at like a Dairy Queen and decided, <laughs> I've served my last blizzard. No more, no more brownie parfaits for you, sir. I'm blogging full time. You had a, what was your job at the time? What, your, was your job so horrible that you had to quit it? No, it wasn't so horrible, but, um, you know, it just, I, I was a web designer for a financial services company. So it doesn't sound like like a hideous job. It doesn't no, sound like you're cleaning job. up roadkill by any stretch. And, you know, I love the people I was working with, but, you know, I had to kind of give this a shot because it's, you know, it's been my hobby forever and I really enjoy doing it. And so I just, I, I, I had to give it a go. Right. Time. So you let it go. Uh, mm -hmm. Friends and family, did they disown you? Did they think you were crazy? <laughs> Did they want to have you committed? What, what no, was the I mean, reaction? I, I've been a web designer for so long, and my mom has never quite known what that so she still, actually she still doesn't entails. get what that is, so right? she, yeah. You know, whatever I throw at her, she's just like, okay. Yeah. My mom's like, TV? What are you talking? I'm like, don't worry about it. It's like the internet, but it's, yeah. on, it's on a different box. Uh, so you quit, and, and you, you did it, and you made it happen. Was it, was it a tough decision, or you just said, hey, look, I need to do my hobby. I need to pursue this. Yeah, I, it, the site was getting kind of old for me a little bit, mm -hmm. and I was thinking about giving it up. Well, what do I want to do? And I just decided, you know, if I could swing doing it full time, you know, then I, I, I you know, I'd actually love to get back into it and like really get engaged and stuff like that. Sure. And that sort of, you know, it was very freeing in a lot of ways. Right. Uh, now, the one thing that, that that is interesting here is that you, you, like you said, you quit your day job, mm -hmm. so you've got to be bringing in funds somehow. You've yes. got to be making some money, and you've actually made money with your website. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you do that? I mean, you're not ad supported. I don't see a single banner right. ad. I don't. I don't. I can't shock any monkeys right. on your website. Yeah. You know, I can't. I can't no. scratch a lot of tickets. So how did you do that? Uh, I had a uh, three week, basically a fund drive, and people could contribute via PayPal. I set something up with PayPal. Okay. And uh, the the basic thing was I was asking them to support my full time efforts on the site for a year. Oh, very so nice. So you said, hey, look, you like this site. If you want to see it for another 365 days, right. give me a buck. No Help obligation, right. but uh, they, they could contribute if they wanted to. It's like a, kind of like a magazine subscription. And, and, they, they, and you managed to do it. You, you mm -hmm. managed to survive for a year off the funds from a three-week drive. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm about, what, three, four months into it now. So, um, yeah, and I've, I, I actually made enough to, to last Fantastic. the year. So. But now why not, why not throw a Google ad or two? Why not, why not go that route? I mean, they're not that intrusive. They can go yeah. up there, you know. I encourage everybody to click mine. <laughs> no, but, but why not do it, though? Why, why stay away from that? I don't know. I just, it's kind of an experiment, to be honest, mm -hmm. um, just to see if you know it could be you, done. You know it's your livelihood you're experimenting with, right? You, yeah. you, you realize that at the end yeah. of the day. But, you, but you're, you're, it's totally paying off for you right now, isn't it? I, I hope so. I mean, right. you know, it's, it's... You're on the stripper couch. If something's going <laughs> right, you know. That's my favorite spot. Yeah, kick back. Someone will come out. Uh, uh, now, you, you, something happened with your blog that, that was really interesting, I thought. You, you got in a little trouble with Sony. A little bit, yeah. Uh, so what happened there? I, I enjoyed the uh, Sony bashing over there. Oh, um, no Sony bashing. We're just kind of telling it like it is. No, uh, what, what happened with Sony? What, did you get a, a cease and desist? I, I did. I posted some information about um, Ken Jennings, who was the, the Jeopardy champ for a long time. And uh, I actually posted an audio clip of him losing before the show actually aired. Oh, fantastic. How'd you get your hands on that? Um, a reader sent it to me out of the blue, just, here you go. Right. And, uh, yeah, Sony sent me a cease and desist, and uh, I ceased and desisted. You desisted. But, but by then, the, the traffic had already probably spiked, and yeah. more people heard about you, right? Yeah, and, and Sony got kind of upset, and, and they, they wanted to pursue it more. Um, but they eventually backed off. Which good, is good nice. to hear. Yeah. It was probably better publicity for them than they could have asked for. So. Yeah, I mean, it, I had several people say that they watched, you know, they, they tuned into Ken Jennings just to, you know, just because they'd heard sure, from it. Sure, sure. So what's the future now for Kotki.org then? Are, are, you, are you going into to video blogging? Are you going to do the podcasting? Or are you sticking to the straight up blog? Just, just the straight up blog for now. I want to do, uh, you know, I'm a web designer by trade and, and the site I did before Kotki.org was more design oriented and stuff like that. And I, I want to get into doing uh, more longer form stuff, I guess. Very nice. Well, Jason, we wish you the best of luck, and thanks for coming on. Thank you. As well. We appreciate it. Everybody, go to the website. Uh, hit up kotkey.org. I hit it every day. You should as well. And if you want to see, uh, you know, kick the guy a couple bucks. He deserves it. We want him to go for another year. Now, the show isn't over yet. Do you see the credits rolling? No, you don't. Okay, we still got your user-created submissions to publicly humiliate, and we'll show you some digital cameras that fly well below, well, at least, at least below the $200 radar. So stick around for that.
The next attack of the show will be here before you know it, especially if you're prone to blackouts. CNET senior editor William O'Neill will be here. Plus, Sarah travels to the land of the dead and forgets to pack her phrasebook. What follows is a delightful comedy of errors. <laughs> and DeviantArt.com, home to the largest art community in the world, holds its first art and technology summit. So we went. That's what'll happen when the next show attacks. All right, you need a digital camera. You've got a vacation planned or a, a wedding to attend or a, a willing lover who's anxious to experiment. <laughs> but good cameras, they're just too damn expensive, right? Wrong, freak. Here are some that will cost you less than your inevitable court case. Am I right, Tina? How do you know about my court case? Is there budget? Well, I just I know that, that you're anxious to experiment, and that's why I want oh, to provide. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you telling the, the world that, Kevin. That well, was personal information. Was so it? Let's go. Well, we were going to show them the, the, the pictures, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, okay, I mean, we have go. to show the quality. So first up, we have the HP M1417. Write this down, folks. It's the M. Oh, it's the M417. Okay. Okay. And the Fuji. AE345. Why now, do you need to know that? We don't. We don't. They're horrible. They're horrible. Don't buy them. Bad cameras. Exactly. Bad cameras. Scold them, Tina. Bad lenses. There we go. <laughs> All if, right. if someone in a, in a blue shirt at a, at a convenience or electronic store tries to sell you one of those, spit in his face. We don't, and, and, do it and say, Tina Wood sent me. Yes, we did enough research to know, no. Not, not, not good no. to go. Okay. Now, these ones are actually might be worth your time. The first one is the Sony, the PSE S40 Cybershot. Okay. Right there. Spin it around. Like, I'm, I'm I, I personally model. love the Cybershot. Mm -hmm. You like that? Yeah. You have a, you have an older model yeah, Cybershot, right? It's, well, yeah. Yeah, it was 500 bucks two years ago, yeah. and it's but it's only three. This one's 200 bucks now. 4.1. Uh, this this is 4.1 megapixels, yes. Yeah. And the problem with it is that the, the form factor itself is is actually well, the the, the form factor is okay. It's just that for being a 4.1 megapixel camera, you'd be surprised that the quality of the photos isn't as as hot as the next really? camera that we're gonna get to. But, but do you know why? Probably. Why is that? Because it really comes down to the lens. It's all about the lens. Okay. Okay. And 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 it's got a nice lens. It's probably a Carl Zeiss, of course it is. But really, this but is the so one that we want to talk about. This is the Canon PowerShot A. 510. All right, this is only a 3.2 megapixel camera. So some would say, well, wait a minute. The Sony had a whole extra megapixel going for it. They're both $200. What are you going to do? 4.1. Oh, I'm getting more bang for my buck, but not really. But why? You're not because because the actual clarity of the photo and the detail that is shown in this is is higher than the Sony. And you'll see yep. we have some photos on our website uh, with with the write up with this. Uh, you know, you're losing details and shadow regions. It can't pick up you know like like cracks in between wood boards. That's the lens. I'm I mean, telling you, it's what stuff comes that's down being to the picked lens. up here. So so this will have it. What's also nice about this one? It's got a 4x optical zoom, which you don't normally find, right. especially in budget digital cameras. They only have like a 2x optical and the rest is digital, which is not nearly as good as, as the right. optical. But, you know, at Canon has continued to really be great with their cameras. Yes. I mean, from, you know, going to 35 millimeter now to digital, you really can't go wrong, I think, with almost you any can. type of Canon. They own the market. Exactly. It's a, solid, it's a solid buy. And what's even great is that you can even pop off with the, 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 you know, the twist of a push of a button and the twist of the lens, you can take it off, and they have extra lens that you can buy. So they have a telephoto lens. Right. They have the wide angle. So even though it's a budget camera, bucks. yeah, exactly. You wow. can extend the functionality yes. of it, and it's a budget camera. So it's not bad. It's all there. It's 200 bucks. It's the Canon. But thanks, for a Kev. full review Appreciate of all, it. yeah, there you go. You might want the lens cover. Oh yeah, as well. thanks. For a full review of all four cameras, get our lab's take on the website now. Like Arts and Crafts Day at Arkham Asylum, it's user created. You know, Kevin, it feels like it was just yesterday when we were uh, showing off the user created uh, eBay auctions. Remember it that? Yes, it was. It feels like seven days ago. We, we laughed and we cried, cried and we reported everybody for auction fraud. Yes. Remember that? Yes, we <laughs> that did. was actually the best part. That of one it. guy totally got arrested. I know. What a loser. <laughs> now it's time to see what you think of the new Nintendo Revolution controller is going to look like. That was our that was our uh, our big. Uh, that was our big challenge. Our big challenge. I said, hey guys, user created come, challenge. Let us know what it looks like. Let's figure it out. What did we What did they come up with? All right, so Brandon Source thinks Nintendo is going <laughs> to keep it simple. Maybe they can still be profitable console. Maybe they're just cheap. It's a nice hard to say. So apparently it's a block of wood. Way to go, Brandon. We know the Revolution is going to be able to play games from all of Nintendo's past consoles. So what kind of controller would that would be able to do that? What do you think? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I bet it was a, a block of wood. Carter Siraj or Saraj, sorry, Carter, if I'm butchering your name, thinks it would look a little something like this. It's described as a very intricate controller. And he also says, forgive me because I only have MS Paint. I'm not buying that at all. There's no way that was MS Paint. No? It's clearly a flight sim game, and the guy just pasted it in there. I'm sorry. Yeah, whatever. I hate to call you out, buddy, but come on. Yeah. Come on. Screw you. It's a good idea. Take it back. I like it. Uh, next one from Blair Coleman. He thinks Nintendo might take a different approach to that problem. This is Mario showing off the new controller after some budget cuts, <laughs> oh, okay. We should also know that uh, it looks like Blair used MS Paint. Too. Yes. But you see, I like Mario's facial expression. He's like, it's his controller. 
Yeah. He was clearly upset by it. Yeah. Oh, well. All right, so now let's go to some actual concepts, shall yes, we? Yes, let's see it. Let's, I want to know what this thing's going to look like. Okay, uh, Taki Den Bumaza, hope I said your name right, made a slick black wireless controller. Uh -huh. Pretty nice. Not bad. Pretty nice combination of all the Nintendo controller shapes, and clearly this person's left handed because the D pad is on the opposite side. But it's a revolution. It's a revolution. And finally, this week's best design goes to <laughs> Mike <laughs> Hayner. For the touch screen, central to design, looks customizable, kind of iPod-esque mm -hmm. indicators, actually look like something we might maybe sort of see in the future, but probably not. Uh, some people are saying that it could use, the, they, they've ex experimenting with the DS, it might be a touch screen, so that, yeah. that could be it. Yeah. And there were, other, there were other prototypes that were leaked on the net, which people said those look real, and it was very similar to that. You so. know, Kevin, you're such a know-it-all when it comes to games. Why don't you ever participate in user created? Because this seems like a user created meant for you. I got, uh, I, I, I don't have any Photoshop skills. Sarah. What about MSP? I just have none. Well, those I have. Those I have. I can use a spray paint tool like a mother. Why I just, don't you? Ah, it's brilliant. Well, in that case, I want you to promise that you're going to participate in next week's user created challenge. What do you say? What is I don't know. I want to know what it is first, but uh, I, I may promise after I hear it. Okay. We're about to launch Attack of the Blog. You've kind of heard us talking about this. And yes. for next week's user created, we want you and Kevin to help us out. We want to get some brand spanking new Attack of the Blog page banners. Ah. And if we like your entry, we'll run it at the top of the site for all of the blogosphere to admire and praise for all eternity until we burn in hell. Or maybe just for a week. I'm going to go with that one. Yeah. Probably. So will Seven you participate? Days. Um, no. Why? No. Okay, I will. I just, because it's going to be horrible and I don't want the top of our blog to look like crap for a week. But Kevin's I will do it. it. I'll do he it. He won't win though. So be sure to go to our website for the template and rules and check out Attack of the Blog for some inspiration. I want to help you. All right. I'll do it. Okay, good. Promise. I might too. Good. Maybe. Now, believe it or not, we actually do care what you have to say. We do. That's oh, why nice. we'll be reading emails and who's down the chat room right after this. Hold it down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh. It's the show. Hey. 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 Oh. All right. All right. That, yeah, that's it. My money. All right, tomorrow is land party day, not stripper day, Kev. Just like Halo lets you pretend to save the Earth from alien invaders, and World of Warcraft lets you pretend to have friends, huh. Battlefield 2 lets you think for a brief moment that you might be able to handle yourself in a combat situation, but you can't. Oh, we've downloaded the Battlefield 2 demo, and we're going to give you a chance to try it out in this week's land party. Now, if you make it back alive, maybe, just maybe, we'll track down the full version of Battlefield 2 for next week. But. Yeah. No yeah. So register, go to our website and click on join our LAN party. That's where you'll get all the details and the links to get started. And we'll see you Thursday. You really want your money you back? Want money, <laughs> money back. What, you what kind of stripper gives money? you the money to get it back? All right, let's see what's going on in the chat room. Tell me what's going on. I worked hard for the money. Oh, yeah, you did. All right, viewer chat, let's get started. <laughs> Zex12 asks, uh, Tina and Sarah, how can you tell if a girl likes you? Mm. I don't know. Well, I'm she'll have sex with you. <laughs> Clearly. Is this Actually, live? And if, and if not, that's, that's, that's what money's for, kids. That's the single best way to tell. Um, shoot, no. Will. Can we rewind that? No, we can't. Okay, we can't. great. But they did on their TiVos, I guarantee okay, it. And awesome. there will be a Tina Wood soundboard She'll punch now. you a lot. Girls do yes. that when they want attention. They, yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah, and they'll say things, I hate you, Kevin. Yeah, they'll flirt. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh really? You guys that do that many times on this show. Oh, so maybe... Oh, my God, I've said too much. Really? All right, next question. Next question from Darth Jeff. If Tina could trade places with any video game character, who would it be? God, that's a good one. That's a great question. Lara Croft all the way, man. She's really? so cool. She's real cool. She looks so good in that outfit, too. If I could pull that off, it'd be awesome. I said yeah. I thought you would take, like, Mona Sachs and be with no. your Max Payne or something <laughs> well, like that. I, no, but I'd rather be Max Payne than actually Mona Sachs. Right, I'd buy that. Yeah, well, you know, but you get, you know, a little, Laura Cross, a little Max loving. She's got money, everything. It's all, all right, good. Hard to beat her. Absolutely. That's a bod. Next one from Eagle Beagle. Who, what were the host's first jobs? Oh, man. You guys... I, I actually stocked beer in a cooler. Did you really? Oh, nice. Yep. That's wow. actually a cool job. That's, that's luxurious in comparison. I, I actually started bagging groceries, and then I was promoted to the beer. Oh, congrats. They, really? They trusted me. What about me. you, t -Dub? I actually, I kid you not, worked at Kmart, and I did blue light specials. Attention nice. Kmart shoppers. On aisle seven, we are having a sale on white socks. That's oh, right. For 25 wow. cents, you can get white socks. Right. It's I my first broadcasting job. All right, we're out of time, yeah. unfortunately. Oh. That's it, folks. Oh, goodness. Thanks to our guests, Jason Paul, Jesse Smith, and the lovely. Thank you guys talented. very much. Thank you. I had a great time. Thank you for coming oh, on. Oh, and check TMR. out t4tv.com. That's right. Friday nights. 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific.